Hello, good day. This Sunday is the seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time. Uh, Leviticus starts off with the words, Be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Now what does that mean for us? Later God says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I think that that's a way of expressing holiness. Who is it that commands this of us? The authority announces himself. I am the Lord, your God, and my, my own words, your God, who is master over you. What does it mean to love? And uh, taking some other words from that reading, you shall not bear hatred for your brother or sister in your heart. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge. Moving on to the gospel, Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 to 48. He's saying now, no longer an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. Offer no resistance to the one who is evil. Not only that, but indulge and cooperate with the one who strikes you or wants your tunic or your service or to borrow from you. Should we all understand all this in a strict sense? In the gospel for Monday, the sixth week of ordinary time, uh, the gospel was Mark chapter 8, verses 11 to 13. The Pharisees demand a sign, which, is, which means a miracle from heaven, from Jesus. He responds, no sign will be given to this generation. In other words, it's the opposite of what he's just saying previously. He's not going to indulge the, uh, the one who wants something from him. He says, no miracle will be given to you. The next uh, day's book of Genesis, which is really uh, today, the day I'm uh, recording this, uh, the reading is uh, chapter 6, verses 5 to 8, and then chapter 7, verses 1 to 5, and verse 10. That reading from the book of Genesis says, When the Lord saw how great was man's wickedness on earth, he sends a flood to destroy those evil people, except for Noah, who is not evil. Well, obviously, he does not offer no resistance to the one who is evil. It's exactly the opposite. He destroys the evildoer by the flood. What do we make of all this? On the one hand, he's saying, uh, offer no resistance. And that uh, if someone strikes you on one cheek, offer the other. And yet the example that's given is a, is a God who does not indul, uh, allow for the evil to happen, who directly opposes it and, and punishes it. Uh, what are we to make of all this? Obviously, Jesus' words should not be taken literally, but as an example of how far God's love is willing to go. Again, an example of how far God's love is willing to go, given the proper and appropriate situation and circumstance. This gospel ends with the words, So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. How much further that goes than the Ten Commandments that God handed to Moses. It's sort of a cornerstone of the Hebrew faith. This means that God is perfect according to his capacity to be perfect, which is infinite. And we are to be perfect according to our capacity to be perfect, which is, in contrast, finite. As God is, so should we be holy. He is our Father. We are his children, maturing more and more each day with the help of the Holy Spirit to grow in his image and likeness as we were first made to be. Uh, that, going back to Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. 
made in his image and likeness. Going on to the second reading, the epistle, the first, uh, first Corinthians, verse, uh, chapter 3, verses 16 to 23. Paul writes, brothers and sisters in Christ, do you not know that you are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells within you? Going on to my own commentary, we are no longer simply human, but God lives in us and raises us above what is merely human by his power. Do not do not think that you are wise if you belong to what is of this world. And a quote from the reading, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. And my own commentary, everything that is good and wise belongs to God and to those who belong to God. And taking a quote from the, uh, that epistle, all belong to you and you to Christ, and Christ to God. In my own commentary, in the parable of the lost or prodigal son, the father says to the elder, older son, everything I have is yours. This is what our father is saying to us. Since we have, we have it all because we are temples of God, it makes no sense to seek anything from a world that has nothing. God bless you. And may each day be a day in which all of us are enriched in the, in the Holy Spirit, made a holy people of God.